Hello and welcome, welcome, welcome. So today I wanna to talk about setting up to 3D print. Um, we will be using the Axiom Direct Drive uh, that is in our print lab. And we're going to go ahead and make a custom profile so we can really control this thing using uh, Cura Ultimakers um, a 3D Slicer. So. Search for that, Ultimaker, Cura, well, I misspelled it, but here you go. And we will go ahead and click here, and we will go to Software, and then scroll down, learn more. And download for free. This will be 5.1.0, and you can download it for PC or Mac. I'm using my PC, so I will download the PC version. And then we'll just go ahead, open it, and install it. Click Yes when prompted, and Next. I agree, sign your life away, and install. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and run once it's done. Allow access here. Maximize here so we can see nicely, and you don't need to pay attention to all this. So what we have is a default printer here. Um, I've actually got mine already set up for my home printer, so it copied over the settings here. But we're gonna go to File. Uh, printers, sorry, Manage Printers. Okay, so we're gonna assume you have nothing here. So there are printers that by default are available, but we don't have one of those printers. So we're going to head and just add a new printer. And we'll do add a non networked printer. And we're going to go ahead and just do a custom printer. There we go, custom FFF printer, and we'll title it Bear Wolf. Axiom. Okay, hit add. And then you've got these settings. Now what these settings basically are is going to be your uh, print settings for the size, width, depth of, of, your, of your print bed, um, all of that kind of stuff. For your X width, you're going to go ahead and use 344, Y depth, 230, Z height, 254, build plate is rectangular. It does have a heated bed, so check that one. And then your print head settings, we're just gonna zero all these out. Zero, 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 254.0, 0. and number of extruders is one, and all of that looks good. Your start and end G code is actually another thing that's going to be changed here. So um, I'm going to have these settings in the uh, uh, notes on the YouTube video here. But you're going to just copy and paste this from uh, the comment section on this YouTube page here. So I'm first going to delete this and then I'm going to paste my start G code right there and delete this and then i'm going to paste my ng code right there so it should look very similar to what i have hard to tell because it's such a small window but if you copied and pasted it correct it will work if you did not it will not work very simple so this is going to give you all of those parameters. 
And then we switch over from printer to extruder one, and we will change our nozzle size to 0.5. And then that should be the settings. And then we go to next. And now we have our Airwolf Axiom. Okay. So that is going to give us the size parameters for our bed and basically the extruder and all of that kind of stuff. Next, we come up here and we click the little down arrow here. Now this is going to give us all of the settings for our actual print. And you're going to want to kind of copy what I'm going to be using here. You can import an actual um, profile from the printer. And I will link that to a OneDrive file in the comments as well, or in the description as well on YouTube here. So we go to um, It is somewhere here. Let me see. Profile down. Okay, yeah, there you go. Manage profiles. And you go to import. Mm. Once you've downloaded the profile that is on, linked on the OneDrive folder there, you'll go to wherever you have that file. I saved mine on my desktop, and I've, it's called Axiom Profile INI. And if we open that up, it will automatically change all of the parameters. Successfully imported, okay. And then close this. And now when we go over to profile here, we can find our Axiom profile. And then it will tell you right here, all of the parameters that are changing. Okay, so now using the Axiom profile, you'll notice we do have all of our settings set up properly here. We've got under our infill, infill density should be set to 16%. Uh, we should have support as well. There will be a brim. Um, and we will also have, I'm going to make this three lines here, and I'm going to do two millimeters on that just as a couple of tweaks that it didn't copy over from my profile file. Okay, so generate support, make sure that's checked as well. And under here, you want to change this, I like to do 60. Um, 60 degrees with ABS works pretty well. And zigzags fine. That's a support pattern. These are all different kinds of support patterns. I'll show you what that's about in a minute. But basically, this is what your settings should look like. Okay. And if you're not seeing all of these setting options, you might actually have uh, not have enough. Uh, if you say, switch it to basic here, you'll see that there's less settings there, which makes things nice. But I do a lot of really custom um, things. And just knowing how this program works is really important for, you know, what you're printing depends on the size and shape and all that kind of stuff. All right, so now that we've got it all set up, we're gonna go ahead and import our first object. So I'm gonna go file, I'm sorry, to the file folder right here, click that, and locate something you want to uh, import, which should be an STL file. And I'm gonna import this one. It might take a second because it's gonna download. And there we go. And since we are teaching, I figured uh, Yoda would be a good character to, to use. Okay, so with our Yoda here, we can see it's all in yellow, which means good. It is capable of being printable. If you see any zebra striping on your object, uh, then it's gonna have some issues printing. Um, we can see also the red under the chin and under the flat parts around it, and that is, places that are indicating that it needs support. 
Um, and that's going to be based off of the angle of our support, which we have set at 60. If I change it to 40, you see we get more red. So that's the angle that it builds the support to. So leave it at 60. Um, and I'll show you what support is, of course, in a minute. The scale of it, if we want to change that, we click on the object and we can type S for scale. And we can make sure that it says uniform scale. And if I want to make it smaller, say 80%, I can make it smaller that way. If I need to make it larger, I can, of course, do 120%. And if you get something outside the build area, you'll see our zebra stripes. Other things we can do here, I'll leave it at 100 for now. And I'm going to go ahead and set a, a rotation. And I'm going to lay flat. This is a great thing that will calculate your object if it's not laying flat and make sure it's laying flat. You want to always make sure your object is flat on the ground and you can usually tell that based on the base layer when we go through that part of the process. I'll show you in a second. Other things moving around here, you can T for transform and grab a hold of our object here and move it around the build plate area. Okay, so once we get it and it looks like it's going to work out all right, um, and you can see that also another thing we've got here is this red on the bottom here that's showing that basically the whole thing is going to be supported because where the toes are is uh, where the, uh, the lowest point on that. And so you might want to cut like with a flat plane um, the bottom part of this kind of a model off just so that it sits flat on the build plate. Okay. So once it's all ready to go here, we can close a little window here and at the bottom. Okay, and then when we click slice, it's gonna do some processing and that processing is going to tell the uh, uh, computer how it's gonna cut the object to allow the robotic arm of the 3D printer to move through space. So if I go to preview here, you can see, first of all, one day, six hours, it's a long time. So that might, might be something we want to think about the scale. Um, and you can see our fill here, our, our support structures here, um, supporting those red areas that we saw earlier. And uh, that's going to, of course, add to the time that it takes to print this bad boy. So let's go ahead over here on the right. We've got this scroller. We can scroll through the layers and we can see how this thing looks. Also, of course, navigation is important. Uh, right clicking and dragging rotates around, um, zooming in and out, and shift with right click pans around the window here. So, okay, so right clicking to kind of orbit around, we can look at it and can see how much support and infill it has. And you watch for that honeycomb to go all the way through the whole piece. It shouldn't break if it breaks at any point. That means you've got a problem with your model, okay? So your model should be an, a watertight solid. Basically, if I poured water into the object, it would fill the entire way with water, and it would um, uh, not be impeded by any overlapping forms. So this is a good model. One thing, again, I mentioned earlier, uh, the bottom is going to be basically supported, floating in space. If I wanted to, I could change that. You see that little grid area there? If I um, have a flat model, the bottom would be all one piece. That yellow piece that you see there would just be that first initial layer. But it's building kind of up at an angle, which is not perfect. So I would probably fix that in a program like Mesh Mixer or um, in Rhino if, uh, um, if at all possible. So that is the actual print as it's going. Some other things to think about here. So once you've got it and you're like, okay, one day I don't mind that, I can just save this to a removable drive and it is ready to go in with the print lab. They can just put it on a micro SD and plug it right into the machine. So this is literally gonna be the, pro the file that's gonna be saved here. So it's saved to my removable drive and you can see it's called right there, CFFP Yoda Rev G code. The G code is what you turn in to the print lab to have them print. Okay but I wanna save on some time. So what I did is I actually sliced the Yoda in half. So if I open um, 
switch back to prepare and go to open a file um, and I'll go to my same folder and I've got Yoda in two parts. So if I select both of these and open them up, you can see what I did. It is basically cut Yoda flat in two different directions. So now I can take this part, R for rotate, rotate it down. And even though it's kind of at an angle like that, I can now use my lay flat function here to get it laying flat. Blue on the bottom, you're golden. P for transform, I'm gonna move it around, R for rotate, and try to find a spot on the build plate that it'll fit, and if not, I might have to scale it down. So there, we're golden. Okay, then we'll move this on the build plate area, and I'm going to probably have to scale this down a little bit. So scale, I'm going to do it 80% and then make sure I use 80% on this one. And we are now ready to transform and move it into the build area. Just finding a nice spot for it. And then I'm going to lay this one flat as well. I rotate, lay flat, and we're looking for all blue on the bottom. Very nice. Okay, so here we're going to use a heck of a lot less support when I slice this. So once you get it rotated and in position, you are ready to slice it one more time. And you'll see it will be substantially less time. There will be no major support for any of the parts. If I go to preview here, we'll check it out. Yeah, there's a little bit of support underneath the top of the cane there, but way less support. And we're looking at about six hours less, um, which is, I think, a nice thing. Another thing that is super manageable to mess with and will make a big difference is um, how much infill you use. Right now it's set at 16. If I change that for this model to 12 and slice it again, you will see a substantial difference in the time. Now, the flatter your object is on top, the more infill you need. So if you're printing like a box that has a flat top, you'll probably want to have more infill, like maybe 15 to 16. This is 12. Not bad. I think that that'll work. That cut out a couple more hours there. Um, and so this would be a good print. And again, this is what I was talking about with base layer. Layer one is showing um, a complete solid flat object. Um, we are also seeing a little bit of wonkiness with the brim around the object here. So I might have to move this one a little bit further away just to make sure that I don't have any weirdness with the initial uh, layering. So that blue line kind of went crazy there. I think that's because of the overlapping brims. So the brim is basically this little area that goes around it. And I use this just basically to get the, the filament flowing right. So that's where we set our three uh, lines earlier. So there we go. Okay, so that's ready to go. Save to removable drive and you are ready to go. So those are the basics of Cura, creating your own printer and um, setting your settings up to uh, the, the quality and performance that matches our printer. Thank you.